All right, Chicago, we are back, and it is time to make some major changes to this franchise. We are here in free agency of 2027, coming off another disappointing playoff run. It is time to make some big moves for this franchise. In the last video we left off, we were looking for a second line center and a goalie, and I think I have the perfect formula for us. So, the two big options in free agency are Martin Natchez and Nico Hishir. If we take a look at both of them here, obviously both of them very good players, 90 overall and the 92 overall. Um, both coming off very solid seasons for their own in their own right, I should say. Uh, looks like Nate Jess did have a little bit more ice time there, but yeah, great seasons for both of them. Um, Nate Jess, a playmaker, he's got four superstar abilities, 94 offensive awareness, decent shot, really good passing. He's fast as hell, just like he is in real life, so very gifted offensively. And then Nico Heischer, kind of the more two-way um you know, still really good offensively, as like Nietzsche's not as good, but defensively he really makes up for it. A um, bit better on the defensive awareness, face-offs. So he's looking like a more well-rounded player. And if we take a look at the chemistry, he fits in on the top six forward lines, whereas Nietzsche only fits in on the first forward line, according to our scouts. And it's not completely accurate at the moment, but um, with the information that we have, that is what it is saying to... Uh, that's what it's saying, telling us. That's what it's telling us. And I think... Um, he sure is a little bit cheaper. I mean, not too much, but that them extra, like, what is that, 1.5 mil? That could come in handy down the road. So I think I want to target Nico Heischer. I'm kind of looking for more of a defensive center anyway, with Bedar being that, like, offensive superstar. And uh, we've had issues with, you know, keeping the puck out of the net. Now, that might not be in part to our forwards, as we've seen our goaltenders' statis statistics in the past. But... That is who I think I want to target on forward. Now, as far as goalies go, I think I have the perfect uh, trade target here for us. We've had um, goalies in the past, kind of a middle overall or lower overall. Um, Kameso, Gustafsson, Georgiev, uh, you name it. Even we've put in, uh, who did we trade for last year? A uh, veteran goalie. Um, wow, I am blinking. Um, he played horribly, like a 19 goals against. I just recorded the video yesterday. How do I not remember? Um... But yeah, you guys, you guys remember who we had. Um, didn't play well at all, and we have not had good goaltending for a ever really in the series. We have not had goal, good goaltending ever. Um, but if we take a look at the Nashville Predators, and it actually already is on goalies. Um, yeah, you can, you guys can see this right here. They already have a medium franchise at 20 years old, 85 overall goalie right here. On top of that. They have an 83 overall high elite goalie at 20 years old. And then on top of that, they still have UC Soros and Askarov. So they are they have way too many goalies. And, you know, Askarov is the uh, goalie they are they have on the trade block. But he hasn't really simmed well. I mean, he hasn't had that much of a chance. But, um, I don't know, 890 kind of scares me right there. But either way, like I said, we're looking for high overall with X-Factors. And that would be UC Soros. He is the oldest goaltender on their roster, so it makes sense for them to move him out. Um, he is full of X-Factors. He's got a pretty big contract, but honestly, I don't care how much money we have to give him. I just need a good goalie at this point. So I think I want to take a chance on Soros. And then uh, the good thing is, if we do sign Nico Heischer, who I think we're going to target, like I said, um, New Hook would become expendable, and that is pretty even trade value right there. We might have to add a little bit more, and we probably will. But we have a ton of assets to trade. I mean, look at these. We just drafted these three medium elites. We have all these low elites. Um, top six is low. Like, we have prospects up the ass to trade. Like, there, that is not an issue for us. Um, and for a big move like this, it is definitely worth it. So, yeah, I think I'm not going to waste any more time. I think I am going to go after Nico Heischer, as I said. Um, I will take a look one more time, though, just to make sure. And then, yeah, because Ottinger is asking for way too much money for us, even to give him a one-year contract. I know he's coming off of Vezina season, but, I mean, we can't give him that much money. Like, there's just no way, especially with guys coming up, how that need to be paid. So, yeah, um, let's go back to all skaters um, and centers. So, yeah, there's, I mean, there's some good options. You know, there's Shifley, Cobb, Roslovich. But, I mean, these are your, these are your main guys right here, Natchez and Heashier. So, like I said, Natchez, he's uh, offensively minded, 93 points last year, which is, you know, great. Um, but I think to help with our penalty kill and, you know, chemistry, it might not. See, that's the thing, though, because we have a power forward 
and whatnot. So now I'm starting to, you know, kind of go back on my statement here. Because we would have, the, the second line would be Lenny, and then either Ovechkin or Caswell. So Caswell is a playmaker himself. So maybe he sure would be better regardless. Oh, his one X-Factor is only born leader. That's not really, <laughs> that, not really that great. So maybe, maybe Natchez isn't a bad option. Um, he can also play the right wing. So we can move him up to that first line if we need to. Ooh, and now I'm starting to think. Martin Natchez might be the move here. Let me take a look again at our forward core. So we know that first line is what it is. Now, Natchez could take over DeBrinket's place on that first line. Um, we can go two playmakers instead of two snipers to start off. And then the second line would be like DeBrinket, who could play the left side, Lenny, and uh, and then... Um, shit, I just... Oh yeah, then we wouldn't have a center right, because we would move down to DeBrinket. Okay. So Natchez would probably play the second line center, regardless. Um, yeah, Catone's faceoffs aren't all the way up there. Because I think Nazar is still going to be on the third line just based on overall. Caswell probably on the third line himself. Um, and then we have the rest of the forward group. So it's it's kind of a toss-up, to be honest. Um, that is tough. And then defensively, we are looking pretty set. We are still... Uh, qualified on Willander. Now, I would love to keep him around, but he is asking for way too much money to pay him as a fourth, or as a uh, third-pairing defenseman, which is what we have him at. Now, he definitely has the potential to be more than that, but um, we, I mean, if you look at our defensive core, we just do not have room for him to be in the top four. Um, Kasparaitis had a great year for us last year as well. He really stepped it up. Um, well, I guess maybe not, not as good as I thought, but um, with his X-Factors and stuff, he's definitely going to be very useful in that top four. And then Pelika. Yeah, I mean, I mean that second pairing wasn't great in the pay playoffs. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not in the need to make a move for a defenseman. And we have depth pieces right here in case Willander doesn't sign. We can always sign somebody else too. It's not, it's not a big worry. But we have our core defenseman uh, intact, which is good. So that is pretty much taken care of. And wow, that Korchinski contract is looking great now as it kicks in. 5.7 for a top pairing defenseman. He had a breakout year last year too. That is looking great. Um, now Seth Jones obviously still has a heavy uh, cap hit. He is our captain. I do want to keep him around for as long as I can. But if we need to make room for cap space, he would be the first one I'd be looking at um, to trade. Because again, bottom pairing defenseman making almost $10 million is... Uh, it's a bit rough, but um, we will have some cap coming off the books this year. Ovechkin's making $7 million. We got him as a rental. Um, and then Kane, $4 million. Who knows if he retires this year. And he actually might even be playing on the fourth line, depending on how our players develop and such. But I'm um, not too worried about that right now. Uh, we need to make a decision, though, on who we want to sign here. Because, I mean, do we do we go heavy with... Uh, with Natchez, or do we go with Heischer here? Um, he's only got one overall better on offensive awareness. Heischer's better defensively. He's better face-offs. Puck skills, excuse me, in the favor of Natchez. As well as his shot slightly. Uh, physically, Heischer is better. And then skating, obviously, Natchez is better. But the max factors... Um, he definitely has the better of the X factors, and I would only consider it he sure to have two because Born Leader is like, I mean, I don't think it really does anything in the sim to be honest. Um, he could be a future like alternate captain for us, but I mean that's like I said that doesn't really help the sim too much. So, um, now if we were to offer Natchez, we would probably if we want to secure that we get him, give him like twelve two five. And then for Heischer, it's like 10-8. So it is like a almost $2 million difference, which is pretty big. So maybe we go with Heischer here. I mean, it's a tough decision. They're both very great players, like I said. Um, NHS would have that extra trade value, though. Ah, man, this is tough. Are we that stingy for $2 million? It could, Like I said, it could really help us. Um... 
Man, that 92 overall is really killer. Oh, man, this is why I'm the GM, though. I gotta make these tough deci uh, decisions here. I think he sure is a safer bet, but Natchez is the, uh... Like, the big candy, I guess, if that makes any sense. It's kind of a weird analogy, but... Um... Yeah, that's... Because 92s have, like, a huge trade value. I mean, not that we would be looking to trade him. We would, we would want to use him. But, like, for example, if we look at... Does the team just have, like, a 92? Yeah, like, look at um, Hampus Lindholm's value, right? Compared to uh, Debrinket. Because they're both, what? Yeah, and he's even older, but look at that. I mean, you can get two... Uh, the brinkets for Lindholm, like if we put Lenny who has similar value, like yeah, look at it's like the same. Like it, it is crazy how much of a difference. Now Lindholm is on a great contract, which might be helping as well. Um, but that is that is crazy trade value. Um damn, this is tough. Cause I, I was pretty sold on uh on Heesher, but now I'm kinda looking at Natchez here as well. He said 94. He's got 97 speed. He fits on that first line, which would just absolutely be crazy. Would be a crazy line. Um, yeah, but then we we would, if we put him on the first line, we don't have a second line center. So he would be playing second line regardless. So his overall probably wouldn't stay the same anyway. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go after the big fish. Let's go after Martin Natchez. This could be the wrong choice. I'll give him 12-3 to make sure he signs. But I just think the extra overall, the extra X factor is, uh, is really... So there we go. We offered the contract. We can't really go back. So there is that. We offered Martin Natchez... Almost 12 and a half million, which is the easily the highest paid player on our team, which is going to come with a lot of uh, a lot of expectations. So I don't think I need to sign anybody else at the moment. Um, let me just take a look at coaches, just because I'm curious. There are two A pluses. Um, wow, 62 percent. These guys are 65, 66. So 65. 62. What's the difference? So he doesn't like New Hook, which doesn't matter. Uh, Caswell, he doesn't really like too much, which is which kind of sucks. Um, this guy does like Bedard a lot. Do we make a coaching change? Um, I mean, that extra chemistry boost could be huge. Uh, this was the Rangers coach, and they just won the Stanley Cup. That is interesting. Not that our coach really, did, you know, he only got one year, but shit, man, if we can upgrade. Oh, he's got 64. He just doesn't like Newhook. Um, Korchinski, he loves. Theodore, he loves. Yeah, so I don't. it doesn't really make much sense for us to get rid of our coach. He's still good. Damn, that, that is tough, though. I see another thing that's throwing me off. Um... Jameson Iliakis, maybe, is how you pronounce that? Um, he's got two cups and a President's Trophy with the Rangers. A pluses across the board. I I mean, shit, I don't really see any reason why we don't target him, though. Yeah, I think I think we, sh we should go after him. Why not? Um, might not be realistic, but I'm just trying to give our team the best chance to win here so i am going to sign jameson iliakis um hopefully i don't regret this either because tan doesn't really deserve to be fired but and like, this is not realistic at all but um shit i don't think half this series hasn't really been realistic with the kind of team that we've put together 
So, yeah, let's, uh... And while we have a second here, because it's going to take a minute, um, I am recording this right after game four of the Stanley Cup final. Um, the last game in Florida. And that was a crazy game. Um, Panthers go down 3 nothing. I'm thinking it's like, oh shit, well this is over. And then they start coming back. They get one back. Um, Montour, like 10 minutes into the second period or something, or late in the second, something like that. And then they get another one in the third. And then... Um, they pull Bob at the end, they get a power play, but they just couldn't convert. And then at the end of the game, there was a huge scramble and fans were throwing shit on the ice. Like it was, it was a crazy scene. But, uh, but yeah, so Robinson Tan, we are going to, uh, can I actually, let me put him as associate coach. Yeah. It should let me sign that, right? Cause I, there'd be infinite cap space. Shit, if I can do that, then I'll t <laughs> I'll take that. If not, then I'll just keep our coach. But, yeah, I I'm surprised I didn't even think of that. Because we can switch in between as well. So I think it, we're ready to advance a few days. I don't really... Am, uh, I'm not in need of another huge free agent. So uh, we can see if we land Martin Natchez. And we'll have to watch his year. And, yeah, so Iliakis accepts. So we have two different coaching options for this year. Which is nice. And so Natchez actually has a few other offers as well. Um, let me look here. Oh, I can't really look because I already offered. Uh, he sure is offered by the Rangers and the Sharks. Um, so yeah, there is that. Because once uh, Natchez makes a decision, he sure will be gone as well. So um, we better make sure we get him. And it's going to be on the 6th. Uh, Kasparitis accepts his extension, which is great. And then... I know in the last video we were looking um, at um, Cat. What does Pelican want himself actually while I'm here? Uh, that isn't bad either. But Caswell was only asking for like three million over eight years, and um, I didn't want to do that because it's exploiting the AI. But if they're going to be this dumb, like we might as well take advantage. It's really, uh, and we are waiting on Catone's answer as well, but. Hopefully the, that doesn't stunt his development or his production, because sometimes that can happen for whatever reason. But, yeah, I mean, if they're going to be that dumb, then uh, we're going to take advantage of that. So, um, once I simulate this next day, we are going to find out if we have landed Martin Natchez. And it looks like he shares up to three offers. Um, Vancouver joining the mix. So we know it's us, and there was... I don't remember what the other team was that was interested in him. Maybe it was the Rangers as well. But, um, but yeah, we are about to find out if Martin Natchez is going to be a Chicago Blackhawk. And that he is. He was extremely happy to accept our offer. Martin Natchez, our new second-line center. And Berkeley Catone also accepts his contract extension, which is great. So, yeah, that is very good news for us. Um, Martin Natchez, officially a Chicago Blackhawk. And, yeah, he won't get 88 because we already have somebody who's going to be wearing that. And it's going to be retired as well. So, there is that. All right, beautiful. As our forward car looking like Bedard, Natchez, Catone, Dabrinkit, Lenny, and either Ovechkin or Caswell... Probably one of those guys. So, that is the first part of that. Now, let's get to the second part. All right, so the second plan of, or the second part of this plan is to acquire UC Soros from the Nashville Predators. So, uh, we already know who we are trading in this, um, which is going to be Alex Newhook. And so, there is Soros in there. Now let's add new hook, and it's pretty close in value. I don't think this will go uh, through one for one though. Yeah, I didn't think so. So let's see who they want first of all. Um, our medium elites I do want to keep, especially Petit since he's got those uh, X factors there. But is there anybody else down here? Um, Persaud, who we just drafted, I wouldn't mind getting rid of. Um, and then Vasiliev, defensive defenseman, no X factors. Um, I think we can move on from him. So if they want to do these two for Soros, I will definitely do that. Um, still no. Okay, but I think we're getting closer. So what if we do 
that and then we can add a pick maybe i'm i'm definitely down to add a pick um we'll start off with like just like a fifth try to see how much we can save here still no let's try a fourth that one is still a no i think the third will give us a bit of a different answer here uh okay how about edmonton's third round pick still no okay uh second i'm still fine with that and there we go. All right, so Alex Newhook, Vasiliev, and a second. And we now have our starting goaltender for this year and maybe the next few years in UC Sar uh, Saros. Saros, it's one of them. I'm going to go with Saros, though, because that's what I've always said. Um, come, not having the greatest year coming off of, but the team wasn't that good either, so that could be a part of it. And honestly, having a uh, above 900 save percentage, giving up three goals against is pretty impressive. Um, I think that shows more that Nashville gave up a lot of chances and shots that um, more than like UC Saros not making enough saves. Um, at least that's what I hope for because um, we just traded for his ass, so he better do good. And yeah, so we do want to sign a backup goaltender. Now, as you can see, we uh, don't need a cap whale this year. We are only uh, we only have one point eight million dollars in cap space at the moment. So let's uh, target a backup goalie here. And then we should be good to sim to the next season, or at the beginning of this season, I should say. So, um, back up here. I mean, you can take your pick with any of these guys. Uh, we, we could bring Kevin Lincoln in back. Uh, who honestly didn't... Has had some uh, pretty good stats in his minimal time with, like, Anaheim and New York Islanders. Um, I don't really think it matters who we sign, because... They probably won't sum well just the way everything's been going. Um, this guy, Arthur Smith, he's only 23. And he could do have some growth as well. So I think I'll target him. Uh, just a one-year deal, though, because we don't need to... Uh, we don't need an extra year for our team there because of our cap space uh, situation, which I'll take a look at and show you guys here in a second. So let's advance a few days here. We're also waiting on uh, Caswell. We don't have enough cap space. Okay. Um, that must be for the future years because... Let me see that. Is that, is that real? Wow, we only have $1.3 in extension dollars. Yeah. So um, I think this is going to be the last year. So that might come back to bite us in the ass because if Caswell has a great year and then he's asking for like... Yeah, already. Look at... He's already asking for 5.6 over 8 years. So that does kind of cost us a little bit there. But honestly, it was a cheese contract anyway. So I'm not too um, upset that we couldn't exploit the AI there. But I think that does tell us that this is going to be Seth Jones' last year in a Chicago Blackhawks jersey. Just because we do not have the money to keep him. Especially with the ice time he's getting. Um, it just doesn't make sense for us. So if we can move on from him after this. Uh, at, probably at the draft, we will definitely do so. But um, he had a great year for us last year on that bottom pair. We'll keep him around while we can. And I think we are ready to go. Um, Smith did sign with us, of course. So Arthur Smith, actually the coach of the uh, the Atlanta Falcons, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I think this is definitely our best team that we've had yet. And we're only getting better. So let us sim up to next season. And we can also take a look... Uh, it'd be interesting to see the chemistry between the different coaches and we can decide with uh, what we want to do there. But um, Tom Willander, I mean, if he wants to accept the qualifying offer, that'd be great. But I don't know if he's going to do that. And we'll see also, like, if his price has dropped. But with us only having, like, a million dollars in gap space, I don't think it's going to be enough. Yeah, so he doesn't accept his qualifying offer. And these are some interesting lines. Let's put Katone up there. That's a plus five. Great. And then Lenny is actually a 90 overall, which is good to see. He's going to be down there. So you have to bring it. That is a plus 5 officially. And then what if we go with Ovi? That's a plus 2. Okay. Um, Caswell, 84. And then Leonoff is also ready for that third line. But then that fourth line. Uh, why is Gutman here? Who the hell is scratched? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you are not scratching Patrick Kane right now. Uh, get him in there. And I think that's what we're going to roll with. Um, obviously, Patty King can easily play the third line, but I want to give Leonoff the proper ice time there. And then we can actually 
finesse this the right way because we can do that. So everyone's playing in a position. The only thing is Caswell does not have good face-offs at all. Um, so maybe we put Leon off at center just because of his face-offs. Um, but no, Nazar is much better. We'll just we'll just do that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, that is looking great. Nate has his best uh, line chemistry fit with this coach is the second line. So I think I think we'll uh, keep this coach. I'm liking the, those uh, chemistry boosts right there. And then Roos doesn't make a minus down there, which is good. And then do we have Ty Smith up here too? Does he? Uh, they're like the same player. So um, we'll keep Roos in there just because he's been with us for a while. And we'll see if we can try to sign Willander, but it's looking like it's uh, not looking too easy for that stance. And then in goal, we have, of course, UC Saros. And I, I just said I was going to say Saros, and now I'm saying Saros. But UC Saros and Arthur Smith. And then in the AHL, who do we got? Uh, wow. Okay, yep. De Silva is there on the top line with McAllister and Porskoff. That is a beautiful first line for the AHL. And then kind of just some depth pieces down there for them defensively. Uh, kind of the same guys we've had for years, honestly. And then in goal, we still have Lindbaum and Portillo. So maybe the AHL team can make a decent run this year. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to that, of course. And then NHL, so power play. Yeah, we're definitely going to have a lot of options here. Um, why is kind of not on the first line power play? Let us change that. Uh Ovi honestly might not be a bad option for the first line, but uh, let's just take Pelicas out completely. And then Bedard is going to be in there. He should have the highest face-offs, right? Yep. So we're going to go with Bedard and Natchez. Um, yeah, I'm good with these five like that. I'm good with these five. And then the second pairing, obviously Bedard is already in there. Um, Ovi... Right in his office with Korchinski to bring it. Um, definitely not Ryan Green. I don't know why the hell he's in there. We can put. Um, we could go the youth. We could go with. I do have like all three of my centers on that first. Well, I guess Katone really isn't, but I have my two centers right there. I mean, Patty Kaming can still give power play time, too, with those X-Factors. Um, he can go right there, and then we can put... Uh, Nazar isn't really... But yeah, maybe, maybe we put Leon off at center, just because of his face-offs. Um, maybe instead of Kane, we put in Caswell, just to give our youth some power play time in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. And then four-man unit. Um, get Bedard in there. Pelican, I don't know why he keeps popping up. We could put Dabrinka on that first line for this one. Um, good with Lenny there, why not? And then Katone, Natchez, Korchinski, and probably Ovechkin, right? For that one-timer. He can go on this side. And there you go, perfect. And then penalty kill, we have... They're putting Bedar or Natchez there. Um, 81 face-offs. I mean, who else do we have on these? Uh, we have Lenny there. That's a minus one. Okay, so we want to make... Definitely not Ovechkin. What the hell are we doing? Um, where is our... And we don't... <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is one thing. We don't have a single two-way forward on this team. Um, who has good defensive... I mean, it's just going to be your higher overall guys. But let me put... Like Nazar, maybe? Is he already up here? Oh, he's right there. Okay. Um, how about Ryan? Oh, Max Jones actually wouldn't be a bad option. He doesn't really fit. Maybe not. Um, let me sort by defense here. Um, Bedard, Catone, they're already in there, I believe. Ovechkin, <laughs> why is he... 89 defensive awareness is a bit generous. Um... Shit, I mean, if they think that's the best option, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't make sense at all. But I'll just leave how they had it. And honestly, my, whoa, minus three is across the board for this five on three, though. I mean, we're going to be an offensive team, so we might have to just deal with that. Um, 
I think our strategy is just going to be uh, score more goals and hopes, or literally the Rangers, we're just hope Saros can make the save and hope that our offense can cover up for it. Um, so yeah, it's a bit concerning with the penalty kill and stuff, but um, honestly, I'm good with all these lines that they're setting. And then extra attacker will change though. And honestly, that is perfect like that. And then yeah, so I think we are all good now with our team set up. Um, this should be a, I mean, we should definitely make the playoffs, um, but we need to go on a deep playoff run. We just, we absolutely need to. We can't afford to lose again in the first or even second round. At this point, it's either, um, conference finals or finals, you know, or bust. Um, one of the two. So we do get to name another assistant captain this year with Pavelski departing. Um, obviously Jones is our captain, Bedard an alternate captain. And I think as with Jones going to be off the team next year, we need another defensive uh, captain seat. So let's put Shea Theodore as an uh, assistant captain there, our top defenseman. And here we are. All right, so let's get past the preseason because it doesn't matter at all. And let's see what kind of damage this team can do here early on. Um not too worried about regular season success. I just want us to make the playoffs. Hopefully in decently convincing fashion with this uh, roster makeup. But, um, yeah, I'm just concerned about the playoffs. So first game of the season here against the Sharks. I do want to try to jump into more games because um, we haven't been able to with getting blown out by Dallas. So um, we'll see what happens here. First period of game number one. There we go. 2 nothing lead. Uh <laughs> Probably the most unlikely guy to score for us. Roos opens up the scoring for the season. And uh, Alex Dabrinka, who's been kind of all reliable for us um, throughout this whole series. And shots are 17-4. to Wow, I did not even notice that at first. That is crazy. Um, second period. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that makes me feel good about Sar uh, Saros there. So the Sharks tie it up there 2-2. Two to two. Going into the third, we have a crazy amount of shots. There we go. Korchinski buries one. Um, we should have like five or six goals right now, but uh, whoever Olsen is standing on his head. There we go. Martin Natchez in his first game gets a power play goal, but John Carlson comes right back for San Jose. Saros not having a good performance in his first game. Four minutes left. Can we hang on to this lead here in San Jose? We almost have 50 shots, and Brinkett buries an empty netter, and we come away with a 5-3 to three victory. 48 shots is crazy. Four assists and five hits for Berkeley Catone. Wow. Um, that first line definitely showed out. But yeah, what an offensive performance, but in goal, Saros not looking hot in his first start. But hopefully that's just, uh, you know... First game, rust there from our goalie. And uh, we do get the win, which is the most important part. So, uh, wow. We uh, we definitely killed it in the preseason. I know a lot of teams were playing their, uh, their young guys, but wow. So let's get a couple months here. Um, actually, let's slow sim this game against Nashville. UC Saros' first game against Nashville. And, uh, yeah, let's see... Uh, Let's see what we can do this season. I mean, we we just... I'm so nervous for the playoffs. If we have another disappointing run, it's just going to look bad. As our offensive game... Uh, our plan to outscore every team, except the Islanders, apparently has worked out well. Look at this game. 9-4 to four against Vegas, 7 nothing against LA. But it is UC Saros' return to Nashville. They're actually not off to a good start themselves. But... Um, I just realized we traded in our division with uh, that new hook and Saros trade, so hopefully it doesn't backfire. And our division is absolutely off to a crazy start. Both the Avalanche and the Stars ahead of us, and we are 8-3-0 right now. So we are definitely going to have to win as many games as we can, as we might be fighting for a playoff spot this year. So first period here in Nashville, 1-1. One one. Uh, Kamel starts off the scoring, but Korchinski gets one for us. Shots are 12-7 in our favor. Second period... Wow, okay, there we go. 5-2. to two. Caswell, Ovi, Seth Jones, and Ovi one more time. Uh, a Finisea for them, and I'm going to just hope that we hold on to this lead. Third period, yep. 5-2 to two victory for us. Saros with a solid performance, and I, I just keep... I'm just going to say whatever comes to mind. Saros or Saros? Um, I think Saros is the pr correct pronunciation, but 
I've said it's like uh, I remember I've always said Tavares forever, but it's actually Tavares. Um, and I go back and forth with him all the time too. So it's just a matter of whatever I'm feeling, I guess. And we'll actually sum up to this other game against Nashville as we'll end the month of November, hopefully on a good note. As we're off to a solid start to the year, no complaints here, but um, we got to keep it rolling. Like I said, our div whoa. Um, I think <laughs> I think Willinder just got tendered, but I completely clicked OK way too fast. Unless he was just like, you have to sign him before the end of the month. Um, where is RFA's Willinder's? What is he looking for, by the way? Damn, he's only asking for 2.6. Um, we just barely don't have enough room to sign him right now. Um, I honestly don't know what that said. I don't... I think it was that he's been tendered, right? Or maybe it's like... Tell me about the deadline. I don't know. That is interesting. As Caswell has went back down in asking price, but we still can't even afford his low um, price there. So yeah, that kind of sucks that I uh, I didn't I kind of missed out on that. Um, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna save the clip real quick. I'm gonna go back in my recording just to see what that said, um, and I'll just be one moment. All right, so yeah, it was just letting me know that the uh, December first deadline uh, was the deadline for me to sign Willander, um, which is actually a good reminder because I uh, that is coming up. So we have to see what we can do here if we do want to sign him. Let's see what the team is doing. Um, obviously, a 12-5-0 start is a pretty good start for us. So offensively forward-wise, Catone leading the way with 22 points. Dabrinka with 13 goals in 17 games, which is crazy. Um, Bedard, 20 points. Nate has 20 points. Good start for him. Ovi, 15. Lenny, 13. Uh, Ryan Green on the fourth line with 11 points. Wow. Um, I was not expecting that, but good for him. Uh, Kane with 7. Nazar, 7. And then among others. So yeah, we're scoring a lot. Defensively, Korchinski leading the way with 13. That's good to see. Uh, Shea Theodore with 10. Pelican, 9. Kasparaitis, 6. And so that's it. Yeah, so these two are plus 9 and plus 11. So I really don't have any... Um, I don't have the urge to sign Willander. So we might actually look to trade him if we can. Um, I won't, I might want to kind of finesse here and wait till after December 1st. That way that team can't sign him for this year. Um, but does he have... Yeah, he's got a, a decent amount of value. Um, unless I just want to hold off until next year. And then, unless he... Be, does he become a UFA at that point? Yeah, we wouldn't have rights, I don't think. So, um, let me see if there is any offers for him, first of all. Um, there he is, Willander. Um, we can get two-thirds, which is... Okay, so two-thirds is the... Uh, return there um i'm honestly cool with that i don't think we have any reason to hang on to him he's just gonna because we have our top four defensemen pretty much set for the next few years and willander might not even make that jump to be a solidified top four i know he's like it says top four it's 84 but no x factors and none of that um i'd rather have casparitis pelica sandy and pelica and then we have, of course, Korchinski and Theodore. So um, I'm going to do this trade with Ottawa for the two-thirds. So thank you, Willander, for all of your service here in Chicago. But uh, it's just come that time where we don't have any room. So I had to move on from them, from him, which kind of sucks. But um, it seems like whoever we pair with uh, Seth Jones down there works out. So let's get... Um, we can probably get up to the deadline because I think this team is going to simulate pretty well. If we start to go on a little bit of a rut, then I might look to make some line changes. But let's just see. Uh, we have dropped two in a row there. But, okay, 8-2 to two win against Washington. Um, and there we go. So we respond back with four in a row now. And we'll see if we can keep this winning streak going. December seems to be the time where we get them big winning streaks. Um, and we are on a heater right now. And we do lose in regulation to the Ducks. There, get one back. So, yeah, we're seven, uh, you know, as about as well as I thought we would. We are second in our division right now. I think I just saw, yep, the stars, man. They will not go away. I wonder if they uh, they got on your back. We'll have to look at that. We do beat them 2-1 to one there, which is huge. Um, so maybe we can catch up to them. We're only four points behind at the moment. Obviously, the simulation is going by pretty fast. But, yeah, 30-10-0. Um, I was just going to say we haven't got any, any extra points. And there we go against 
San Jose, we beat the Winnipeg Jets 9-2. to We are scoring a shit ton of goals. Look at these final scores. Um, yeah, 6-5 to in overtime we lost, which kind of sucks. But yeah, we are putting up numbers on these teams. So definitely looking like a playoff team as, uh, as expected, as we should have been. Um, a couple of losses here, though, but there we go with Tampa. And yeah, so we'll get up to the deadline here. Uh, we'll take a look around the league a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, we'll call it for this episode, but we will uh, definitely, yeah, 40, 16, and 3. Definitely a good record for us. Um, let me send this game against St. Louis, who are having a good year themselves. And this is a divisional game, so pretty big game for us. Uh, first period. All right, they get two on us early. Robert Thomas and uh, Guliyev. I'm probably butchering that. Um, shots are 11 to 15. Oh, they got that last goal with 18 seconds, which kind of sucks. So we'll see if we can uh, respond here. Second period. We do get one back. Connor Bedard on the power play. And let's uh, hop into the third period here. We need at least one more to tie it. And that we get. Shea Theodore. Named alternate captain this year. Power play for us goes nowhere. Uh, another power play for us goes nowhere. And then that turns into a St. Louis power play, which also goes nowhere. And then Hobbs for them gets one back they are getting a lot of shots we just need one more to tie again can we make that final push two minutes left and no okay so we don't even get a point out of it which kind of sucks but we fall to st louis three to two there uh <laughs> and of course the goalie that does that to us is alex georgiev so that is uh and that you know what's funny is St. Louis is right there in that playoff mix. If we have to go against the Blues in the first round, that would be hilarious um, to face our former goaltender. But 40-17-3. and three, um, Connor Bedard already with 37 goals um, at the trade deadline. We'll see here what we're uh, looking like for points-wise. So forward, 66 from Bedard leading the way. Uh, Dabrinkit with 64. Natchez, 58. And Catone with 58. OV 45, Lenny only 38. Um, that is a bit concerning. He only has 17 assists, which is kind of hurting him. But yeah, that's only a, about like a 45, almost. So I guess it's not as bad, but um, hopefully he can pick it up there because it looks like he did tail off a little bit since the last time we looked. Nazar 28. So that third line not doing too great either. So we might want... What is Leona fat? Oh, he's at an 84, though. I don't want to stunt his growth. So we'll uh, we'll leave that how it is. Um, Caswell, 19. Actually, they're not they're not playing too bad. Um, so there is that. Defensively, Shea Theodore, 41 points. Uh, leading the way, Korczynski with 36. 27 from Sandy Pelica, which is good. Is that already a career high for him? Um, yeah, in the NHL it is. So uh, he's looking to have a breakout year himself on a contract year. So that's not good for us financially, but um, we'll see what goes on there. And then, yeah, look at that bottom pair, plus 22 and plus 26. Um, beautiful looking there. That second pair, um, actually, that that is very weird. Sandy and Pelican's a plus 20, but Casparitis is only a plus 2. So that is something to watch, I guess. Um, and that, wow, Shakespeare is a plus 40. That is crazy. And I think I forgot to check this when we were about 20 games in, but this is the big question. What are we doing in goal? And all right, that's what I like to see. Uh, UC Saros, 917 save percentage is very solid for us. And then a 908 for a backup isn't bad either. But yeah, at least we're not sub like 910 for once. My God. Um, so maybe, you know, the max factors are coming in handy for us. Uh, thank God, man. We desperately needed some good production from a goalie. And then around the league, uh, Saros is the wins leader. And among starters, he is leading in save percentage, which is good to see. Him, Gibson, and Shesterkin are all tied. It's actually a very tight race for the Vezina right now. So that is something to keep an eye on. Defensively, holy shit. Um, Quinn Hughes, who signed in Seattle in the... Holy hell, 15 and a half million? That is fucking crazy. Um, but my god, he's got 79 points in 64 games, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's a good thing for Seattle, but holy shit, dude, 15 and a half million is crazy. Um, yeah, you can see the 22 point gap, uh, he was just one of the best, or the uh, Norris, no question. Um, that's gotta be probably a career high already, okay, well, 83 a few years ago, but he's gonna top that. 
Um, he might hit 100 points this year, which is crazy as a defenseman. And then he should also be leading in goals. Yeah, 21 goals as a defenseman. And then forward-wise, Connor McDavid leading the way. Um, Bedard is right here. That should be a threat. Two, four, six, eight. That is ninth, actually. Because three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So ninth in scoring for Bedard. He is also third in goal scoring with Matthews at the top there with 40 goals. Yeah, McDavid's up here. Matthews, Brad Marchand, who actually just was a free agent. The Islanders picked him up, and he's had a great season for them. Uh, Stutzla, McKinnon, uh, Kreider is actually up here as an 82 because oh, he's playing with McDavid. That makes a lot of sense. Um, they found their OV replacement right there. Uh, Eichel's up there. Shane Wright is uh, making his mark in the league now. Dylan Cousins is up here. Any huge surprises? Um, not really seeing any. Um, yeah, all these guys I could see being point per game players. So there is that. And yeah, so actually Quinn Hughes is leading the league in points as a defenseman. So he might even win the hard. That is crazy. Um, yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye on that. I'm guessing Seattle is probably in a playoff spot with that type of performance, right? They have to be. Uh, yeah, the third, they're only third in their division. Uh, only 32, 28, and 4. So, um, can I look at their team real quick? This is, uh, intriguing me a little bit. Uh, that is San Jose. Oh, yeah, wow. They have, uh, Wright, Bedard, or not Wright, uh, or not Bedard. They have Wright, Beneers, Chauvin, McCann. So, very good forward. They have Michael McLeod in the fourth line. So, very good forward core. Um, defensively, not as strong, but you have Quinn Hughes, so don't have to worry about that. And then in goals, this there, yeah, they just haven't had great goaltending. And this guy actually was, yeah, he had a 920 last year. So I'm um, having a bit of a rough season there. But yeah, Seattle is looking pretty good. But yeah, so as far as we're as far as uh we're going though in Chicago, 40 17 and three is a good record for us. Um, I don't think I want to make any moves at the deadline since it didn't seem to work last year. But you guys let me know if there is anything you guys want us to target, if you think we need to upgrade anything here in Chicago. But, um, yeah, so as far as this video goes, uh, wow, that was pretty Canadian right there. But as far as this video goes, uh, that will be the end of it. Thank you guys so much uh, once again for the support recently. I've been saying this every video, but, um, yeah, we've been doing really well so far. So thank you guys. Um, I will be starting off some new content pretty soon. Um, I won't say what, but you guys will see when it's posted. Uh, but yeah, this has been too long of an outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, you guys take care.